Hello all, welcome to the tutorial on web scraping. I have here before, before me um, the module with Jupyter Notebooks already installed. I already have a couple of notebooks and today we'll talk more about web scraping. Uh, so far what we've done with Python is learn the basics of the language, right? We've looked at uh, the basic data structures like integers, floats, strings. We've also looked at a little bit more advanced data structures like lists and dictionaries. And now that we have these basics, what we want to start doing today is start uh, thinking about how we can use this knowledge on Python, uh, Python data structures to our advantage. Okay. So the first topic, and to me at least, some of the one of the more exciting topics would be to put the knowledge that we've learned on Python to scrape or trying to get the contents uh, of the website somewhere out there. Okay. So in order to be uh, for us to be able to do that. We do need some background on uh, internet on the World Wide Web. And today, and this is the part one of the tutorial on web scraping. In this part one, what we will do you know, is these three things right here. So we'll talk about uh, the internet and the World Wide Web. For us to be able to do web scraping, we do need to know a little bit about how the World Wide Web works behind the scenes. Again, we don't need the technical fundamentals. We just ne need to know a high level overview of, overview of how things work. You already know this because you interact with the browser, pulling up the web pages. Uh, I just want to use these terms, the internet and the World Wide Web, to talk about how these things work, and then talk about the tools that Python has in order for us to be able to access the content on the web and also to process this content on the web. This is what we are going to be doing in part one. To be able to do this, yes, I will introduce some basics of packages such as URL lib and requests in this tutorial. And I'll also refer to very briefly on another interesting package called Beautiful Soup. Uh, but we'll certainly talk more about Beautiful, Beautiful Soup in the next module or the next part, okay? So again, today, part one, we are mostly going to be covering these three topics here. Let's get started. So first things first, the internet and the World Wide Web. Again, if, you, if you've if already come across these terms in a previous CAS class, let's say 2200, stop for a second and think about what you think is the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web. I would say that the internet and the World Wide Web are quite distinct. The internet to me uh, refers to the underlying plumbing, the underlying network of networks. This is the physical infrastructure that's there that carries our data out there, okay? The World Wide Web is just one of the many applications that use the internet. For example, I'm going to switch the tab here. So here is an example of me using the World Wide Web. And what you see here, HTTP or HTTPS, is a protocol that uh, that the, that the World Wide Web uses in order to access the content from Google. So all we are doing here is send a request that says, hey, Google, send me the homepage of google.com, okay? And Google then finds your address based on your request and sends homepage back to you, okay? Let's just look at a picture here to see what actually might happen when you type in google.com, as I just showed you, right? So what we see here, right, in the picture on the right-hand side is that you see that the World Wide Web is on the top, it's an application. It uses HTTP protocol. So internet is TCP IP, right? It somehow takes the request that you said, like by typing on the browser www.google.com, that basically gets translated as send me the homepage for google.com. And this is now broken into packets and it tries to find the right address. Where is Google server located? Let me send the request. Now it's going to go across the network, go to Google server and find the Google server. The information gets reassembled, the data packets get reassembled and now Google reads the request, send me the homepage. Then it sends you the homepage again across the network, right? If you come back to the left side, so here's your application, World Wide Web, that uses the protocol HTTP, right, to access content. Internet for us is TCP and IP. Again, the fundamentals of how these things happen, the technical details, we don't need to know it, but this is what the internet is, physical infrastructure that helps your request at the application level get across to another, another computer, okay? And here's 
another application, example of a second application, email, right? That might use protocols such as POP and SMTP. And there are a lot of other protocols that, are, that is being used by the email application as well. And there could be a whole bunch of other things that I'm not even mentioning, instant messaging, video streaming. They all might have their own protocols. Again, a bunch of rules that, that takes your request and sends it across to the other side, okay? Okay, and for our class, we are going to be mostly focusing on the World Wide Web, sending a request across the internet to a server, asking for a home page, for example, asking for a specific page, a web page, for example, I'm getting the response back, I'm trying to process that information, okay? And that's what I try to say here, at the application level, the World Wide Web uses the protocol, HTTP protocol, uh, and we talked about what happens when you type in google.com, and this technically is called a request response cycle. So the, the fact that I'm typing in google.com on, on the browser and me getting the google.com web page back is called a request response cycle, okay? It basically fetches or gets the resource you requested. It's typically a web page, but it doesn't have to be a web page. It can be a PDF file, it can be an image file, right? It can be a text file, some resource that's located at a different place across the internet. That's all you need to know, okay? And again, we are lucky that the technology has advanced to the point where the web browser masks most of the complexities of what happens behind the scenes, right? So you know, uh, well, yes, it's nice for you to know that internet uses TCP IP protocol. It's nice for you to know that internet is different from the world wide web, but ultimately what we care about is getting things done, right? As a user, as an end user. So web browser masks most of these complexities but if you want to write programs, right, to get some of these resources, again, you don't need to know the technical details, but you do need to have a higher level conceptual overview of what goes on behind the scenes, okay? So what we will do in this module is look at some of the tools that Python might have you know, for us so that we can work on getting or accomplishing what the browser does for us, okay? So while we will talk about High-level packages like URL lib, the ones I mentioned before here, high-level packages like URL lib and request. I just want to mention to you up front before we start that there's actually a lower-level package that's kind of kind of reasonably technical called socket. All right, I think I have it somewhere here. Socket should actually be socket, not sockets. All right, so that protocol basically works at a much lower level. Uh, let me explain what I mean by look, by showing you this request response cycle, right? Typically, again, as I mentioned, when you type in, let's say you here here you are, you know, you are the client, you are the end user, sending in a request for Google's homepage or CNN's web page or some other site, right? You send in a request, it goes across these different layers. Again, we only care about the application layer. We don't want to care about the other layers, right? It goes across these layers to the browser, sorry, to the server, server sends the response back, okay? So while we don't care about these layers, socket, for example, allows you to access this layer, allows us to work with the lower level layers, okay? Again, you don't need to know the socket for the exam, but I just wanted to put it out there so that you know that some, if you're, if you're more reasonably technically adept in a future time, let's say you wanna explore other applications other than HTTP, Right? Maybe what you might want to do is start here and then have another package that might be a different application. Okay, This allows you to do it at a more micro level, allows you to access the internet at a more micro level. Okay, So what happens with Socket? So here's an example of a code that I picked up from Stack Overflow. Basically, you import a package called Socket. You, this is the, let's say that this is the resource that you want to get, stackoverflow.com. Okay, and let's say that let's say that you want to establish a connection right there across the internet. So this is really the type of code you might write. I mean, don't ask me what this means. You don't need to know. We're not going to be using this, but you will basically create a connection, right? This is what this statement does. And once you create a connection, and by the way, this is not unlike the file object that we looked at when we were looking at files module. If you remember, the file object that we create does not directly touch the data, 
rather it creates a connection, end-to-end -end connection, right, uh, to the data. So we are creating something like this, end-to-end -end connection from your client, from here, creating a connection to the server, okay? And that's what we do by writing this connection, right? And of course, we need to say, where do we want to connect? So you say, the file object connect to this website on this port. Okay, for, for HTTP, for websites, typically the number happens to be 80. Again, low level details that you don't need to worry about for our class. And then you basically send a request, right? And try to get some message back, right? And if you remember, the request here is the request for this resource. HTTP, this, this is basically telling me, telling uh, the connection, send me the homepage of stackoverflow.com. And then I'm processing this at a very low level. It's gonna send me the homepage, HTML, page and it's, this is processing <clears throat> the while loop processing it at a very low level okay all right so now let's see how this code might work uh, again you don't need to know this I'm just going to copy this I'm not I'm not going to run this here because you may get a whole bunch of data that I don't want to uh, appear here so I'm just going to go open a new file new Python Jupyter notebooks okay Okay, so I'm gonna copy the code. That's very similar to the code that you see above, okay? I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it here. Let's see what happens. I just told you, here's a file, kind of an object that creates the end-to-end -end connection, asking to connect to stackoverflow.com, and I'm trying to process the information here, right? So I sent in the request. Now it's probably establishing a connection behind the scenes. Uh, I'm not able to move to the next one because this is kind of hanging here, right? That probably means the data is coming in. Hopefully it'll be here soon. There you go. So what you see here, I'm just gonna try to, it's still, it's still collecting data, so I can't really move. That's why I didn't wanna do this in the previous slide, the previous page. So you can see that a whole bunch of data that this request sent in. And if you notice, this looks like a HTML page. Again, if you don't know what HTML is, don't worry. This looks like an HTML page, a bunch of HTML code. That's for stackoverflow.com, okay? So a lot, a lot of information. Again, we, we, we access this information by establishing an end-to-end -end connection, right? Using a low-level TCP connection at the internet level, TCP connection. And then we try to use an application, in this case, HTTP, use the web application to get the resource for the web web page okay and here's what came back okay so this is one way of doing it but we will not do this for our class again I wanted to show you very quickly I'm just going to delete this okay just wanted to show you this to see how this works try it so that you get a sense of you know there are sense of what's possible at a lower level okay because the nice thing about Python is that we don't have to worry about that level rather we can do this where we use a package in this case package name is called package name is url lib there's another package called request that i'll talk about a bit later okay it's a bit more advanced also very easy but these two help you establish the connection right across the internet establish the web connection using www right the application establish the connection and ask for uh, resources across the web, across the internet, okay? So how does this work? So for this purpose, what I've done is I've created a page. Again, I don't wanna deal with Stack Overflow kind of page, which is very large, you know, may, may send large amounts of data, HTML data, okay? Um, so what I wanna do is ask for simple information, okay? So I created a page that I'm gonna show you, okay? So let's see what you can see here. I'm gonna go here, and V. All right, so you see a page here, simple page, all right? And that's maybe two links here. So I click here, I go to Borough College, and it's loading. But I know I know that eventually Borough College will appear. I'm gonna go back. And I also have another local page, okay? So again, this is on the same server. So I have another page that has some other information. So this is the page. Okay, and by the way, if you do not know HTML, okay, 
again in the beginning it's not important but it's useful for you to know some very basic html unfortunately it's very easy okay so what i'm going to do shortly is uh, on the course website i'm going to link you to a very short video that you can watch that gives you basic basic information on something called html for example how can i display this information as a web page so you need to know a language called html again you need to know this for this class very simple that's the beauty of it so i'm going to link you to a new youtube page okay that shows you very simple things like for example i'm gonna view page source so what do i mean by html when i do this on the chrome so you can actually see what kind of html file is in the background so this file basically tells the browser to display this information so it's basically formatting this information that you see here you see this text information here it's basically you'll find it somewhere here if you look carefully you will come to my page Jim Beam, Borough College which is a link right this other page page 2 so you pretty much see the same information but surrounded by some tags for example head tag title tag you have something called B something called H1 right this is useful to know if only because you remember here when we looked at Jupyter Notebooks I can type in comments right so I can do this so again it's useful for you if to know very basic tags so because this markdown oh right this markdown actually takes HTML code allows you to write comments allows you to you know write text here okay and that's how you see web scraping here if we go back up here I actually used HTML right I'm going to go here let's see this is probably simpler you see that I've used some tags that are basically HTML, okay? And if you run this, press Shift Enter, you actually see the content. So it's basic HTML, very useful to know. So I would expect that you would access that link that I'm going to post on YouTube to understand basic HTML, okay? So if you haven't done that, take a moment, you know, uh, watch the other video, and then come back uh, to this place again.